All right, so today I'm gonna to be mounting the winch. Uh, whether or not it'll work is still kind of anybody's guess. But uh, what I went and, and did was I mounted the plate here. Had a bit of a problem with the, the screws that were up on top. I apparently picked the one spot at the very center of the two by four where the bolts, where the screws actually came down into the wood from the plywood up above. So I pulled those out. I'm gonna pop one more hole here, put the bolts in on either side and then take the winch and mount that motor to the driver's side here. The cable's gonna come out of these rollers right here and go in four opposite directions to each corner of the bed where they will hit a set of pulleys. As the cables go to each corner, uh, they'll be sitting on one of these pulleys, which will send the cable from the bottom of the platform up to an eye bolt in the top of the frame. And the pulley, as it turns, will just raise the bed up to the ceiling. I think these are about 500 pound test cables a piece. The winch is a 2,500 pound winch that I got on Amazon for about $80, so jury's still out on whether or not that's a good one. It's pretty easy to control. It has a remote control that is very simple. Uh, it'll mount onto a wall or whatever that's got a spring-loaded in and out uh, option that you have to hold it in the whole time and then when you let it go it'll stop from whatever direction it's going and that'll actually get mounted on the, on the front end of the platform itself. I'm gonna have a kill switch mounted on the positive end of just on the, on the motor side of the switch and I'm also gonna have a potentially have a kill switch on the line coming from the battery to to the, the winch itself. So with those two in mind if it does start to raise and not stop and have some kind of malfunction at least I'll have a, a, an end result kill switch to cancel uh, cancel power to the switch and if you know if they're right next to each other uh, cancel battery uh, can cancel battery power to the actual winch for the entire system so two uh, two security systems at play so so what we have to do now is send a, another bolt down uh, through the center with the winch in tow, and the other two bolts are gonna keep the plate in place. It's actually tough. I mean, you could, you could probably just uh, you know, pin it in like that. Uh, noticing that it wiggles a little bit, I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna brace it on, on both sides of the main joist with, with two by four blocks. I'm just gonna keep it from wiggling a little bit just to secure it a little bit more. There's also going to be central pilings between the, the main joist to hold it, more or less like a kind of like a buttress for the underside. Securing the platform to the frame of the bus itself is going to be these. I have a set of eight heavy duty um, ball bearing, um, I believe they're polyurethane wheels that are, that are mounted to this big heavy duty hardened steel. This bracket is gonna to mount to a two by four brace here, uh, here, and a two by four, and, and the same thing on all four corners. There's gonna be two braces. So I'm gonna have one wheel going this way to hold it, push it back that way, and one wheel to go this way and push it back that way. Same thing with all four corners. So all of the wheels will be pushing it in toward the center. And as it rolls up those beams all the way to its final stopping point, it'll have pressure on all sides. So even if there's some give, even by like a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch, uh, it's not going to let loose and, and fly all over the place. And these are pretty dirty. So what I'm gonna have to do is clean them up today. And then I've got some handy dandy uh, bike chain grease slash axle grease. Uh, it's not quite axle grease, but it's really, really thick. I bought it when I was in Taiwan, and uh, it did the trick for several years. It just really cleans the goop out. It's made by Giant, and um, that's actually it's made by Finish Line, but, but marketed by Giant. So it's good stuff. So it's important to note but before you get started that these are wall mount style pulleys, and the reason that these are important to get is because you never know where you're going to need to mount them. And in, in my particular situation 
Uh, I'm mounting them with the bottom three, actually bottom two uh, bolt holes, and using the third as a guide so that the when the cable comes up and over the pulley, it'll actually go through the last bolt hole and up to the symbol at the top where the where the top eye bolt is. And so that's actually a very happy accident. Uh, now whether or not that proves to be too much of a, a rub, tears that down, um, remains to be seen. But the important part is uh, that you, you have this style of pulley. Now this is a 420 pound pulley. And uh, so what you'll need before you get started are a pair of needle nose pliers. I have uh, Leatherman here. Uh, you'll need a, a pen to mark off where, how far in your pulley needs to go. You'll need, obviously you'll need some three inch uh, either deck screws or you could possibly also use the drywall screws. You'll need to pilot a couple of holes with a drill bit and obviously you'll also need a regular drill bit, uh, drill bit and I recommend a DeWalt with, that has the, the, the screw holder, the, the outer grip that'll spin while, while guiding it in because that um, it's going to be some pretty tight quarters you're going to be drilling into. You're also going to need to remove the, the, the spinner on the pulley itself. So to do that, you just take one side of the needle nose and put it against the edge of the outer rim and then grab the inside of the cotter pin and squeeze. That'll pull it right out. So you'll need to keep these in a safe place. Uh, once those fall out, um, the inside wheel actually has another little axle spinner on it. So keep those in a safe place and then use your pulley to uh, mount. Yay! All right, so I've measured the distance from the top thimble and eye bolt. It's about three inches over from my guide beam here. So, and that's three inches on the back. It's not on the front because the angle of the pulley is not gonna be straight. It's gonna be coming in toward the cable itself. And that angle I'm gonna find actually when I start when I, after I've got my measurement of, of the three inches from, from the guide. Also, you will do yourself a big favor by thinking ahead on how you want to mount the outside of the the pulley and what I mean by that is if you mount it this way you, what you have is only the small circle to guide the cotter pin in once it's actually there so what I did is I, I flipped it around to get myself that wider area to flatten out against that cotter pin and you know who knows what will happen over time something bumps into it or whatever so that will help protect it but also you know you're not dealing with such a small surface when you can't really get behind the thing later on when everything's drilled into place. I actually had to take my desk out to do this so, so that I had enough vertical space to drill in. So in any case, that's just something to think about. So I'm gonna put that plate this way and all of the other ones have been done that, that way as well where the, the majority of the larger plate is facing the center of the bed. It just gives you a little extra play. Now all that's left to do is to guide the cable in. This will be my last one. Once it's up there, I will secure all of the cable clamps to the thimbles and from the thimble to the eye bolts. And then we'll do a test run, maybe? See how it goes. All right, so I've got the first of the four pulleys mounted. And what that required was to get the correct angle from the outside of the pulley to the double roller frame, make sure it's you know, taut against uh, where it's gonna be rolling out of, and then to send it up around the outside of the pulley and then through an eyelet on the other side. 
The eyelet isn't generally made to have this go through it, but it's also accustomed to having a thicker coil or a thicker threaded cable. So this one will actually fit through that, guide it up through above the, the, front, the platform. And all I really had to do was measure it from its rolling post back. So back this direction, as long as the connecting point is directly above the outside of the pulley, the eyelet has a lower chance of rubbing against this rubber surface and eventually the, the threaded metal surface and eventually popping. So uh, let's hope I'm doing this right. So that looks like it's actually pretty smooth. And uh, I'll go up there and connect one of them, see if it looks like it's, it's gonna maintain that pressure without having too much rub. All right, so this is my, my pulley system right here. And the theory is that they don't, they won't crimp the cable in that corner that makes the square of those perpendicular angles. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If so, be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Construction on the tiny home is actually complete. So visit kyleodonnell.com slash blog to binge watch the build. You'll not only read my personal journals during construction, you'll also see videos covering everything from solar installation and transforming bedrooms to wiring your electronics and off-grid plumbing.